of the glory and the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we pray. No. Oh. 
Father, we bless your name, we give you praise, we give you glory and honor. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to save us, O oh God. We thank you that we have the way through the Father, and that is through you, Jesus. Father, we worship you, we adore you, and we give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, we bless your name this evening. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you. The opportunity to speak to your children. We surrender ourselves this evening, O oh Lord. Use us, O oh God. We humble ourselves, O oh King of glory. Holy Spirit, we ask you to take over. We ask you to reach out to souls that are dying, O oh God. We ask you to reach out to people who are lost, O oh King of glory. Convict them, my God. Jesus, you say that we would not remain alone, but we would have a helper. Holy Spirit, convict your children. Speak to your children. Open their minds. Open their eyes. Help us to know the truth. Help us to understand the right way of living. Father, we honor you and we adore you. I give myself as a vessel. Use me to speak to your children. May your name be lifted up and may your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Jacob. <coughs> Thank you, Ray. Yeah, my voice is a bit there, there. We had a very great weekend in Intungamo. For those of you who are watching us for the first time, my name is Judith Angwech uh, Okwany. I am married, and God has blessed me with three children. I bless the Lord for my life. Yeah, I also work. I bless the Lord for my job. I work with Minister of Lands in Uganda. And uh, yes, I also teach. I'm a lecturer. I, I do many other things here and there. I bless the Lord. I told you my voice is a bit unclear today because we had a very powerful uh, conference and uh, teachings here and there in, and worship, praise. And in Tungamo, it was really powerful. I bless the Lord. And I also thank God that a powerful testimony came out of it. It was uh, when I was traveling to Ntungam on Thursday last week, I left my dad fighting for his life. I left my dad very sick, very sick in hospital at Heart Institute. And I remember one thing. I prayed to God and, and God and I said, God, it doesn't matter. What is so important is his soul. I have helped him to recommit his life to Christ. I have talked to him. I have preached to him. The rest is in your hands. Let your will be done. But nothing is going to stop me from reaching out to dying souls. My dad is in your hands. I am off to Ntongamo. While everyone, my brothers, my siblings, everyone was rushing to Kampala. Like there was chaos in the hospital. People were crying left, right, center. People were rushing. Like everyone, the doctors seemed to have given up. It, it was really a tough situation seeing everything just crumbling down. While people were rushing, coming to hospital, me, I was traveling. I remember I drove in the night night, I was traveling to Ntongamo. And yes, we arrived safely. And as soon as I got there, the Lord removed everything about my dad from my mind in order to keep me focused. So I remained focused on preaching the word of God from Friday, Saturday, up to Sunday. For three days, I was there preaching the word of the Lord. People were touched. People repented. People turned back to Christ. People recommitted their lives. And when I was done on Sunday, the last time we preached, praise the Lord, my dad was removed from the feeding tube and he started speaking. So I want to bless the Lord. When you do the will of God, he does every other thing that concerns you. So God is so faithful. I didn't even go there because I was going for this too, that my dad should live. No, me, I was just doing the work of the Lord and he continued to, he, he, he was so faithful that he did the rest for me. Praise the Lord. Yeah, today we are going to talk about, uh, we are going to continue talking about bribery and corruption. I think, as I mentioned last week. But before I do that, my daughter requested that uh, she she gives us uh, a verse uh, that uh, I think she was able to learn. I don't even know from where I didn't teach her. But she requested 
to be able to give it to us. So I am giving the, oppo the other opportunity. I bless the Lord for it. Let's teach our children the word of God. Let me tell you, uh, my daughter Noeline, please come. Uh, my, my daughter Noeline is and, and the rest of the children, Josiah, Nisi, all of them, they are my greatest intercessors. Every time there is prayer, every time I tell them to pray, what they do is what? They pray for mommy. Uh, Josiah, you can stand this side. They pray for mommy. They say, uh, God, we Father, we pray that mommy will preach. Well, Nisi, come this side. Come this side. They pray and say, Lord, we pray that mommy will preach well. Give mommy strength to preach. So, for some reason, they always pray for me. Every day they pray for me. So they are my greatest intercessors. You're seeing them here. And simple and innocent as they are. God hears their prayers. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Noeline is here. She's going to give us the scripture that she has. And I think, Nisi, you want to introduce yourself? Okay, you can greet people. Le let's start with Josiah. My name is Josiah Alinaitwe Gracious. I'm in primary two. My school is Little Diamonds. I am seven years old. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Josiah. Yes, Nessie. My name is Lizzy. I stay in Little Diamonds. And, and my name, and I also stay in Kungu. Mm -hmm. And also, I... I preach with mommy. You preach with mommy. Wow. Thank you so much, Nisi. She says she preaches with mommy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Noeline will introduce herself and give us the scripture. Okay. Praise God. Look at the camera again. My name is Noeline Tanya Nasigetila. My school is a civil way, and I'm six years old, and I live in Kungu. May God bless you. Okay, you can give us the scripture now. You can show the scripture. Yes, I think you can give us the scripture. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9 to 18. But it's going to be a long one. <laughs> Give instructions to a wise man. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9 to 18. Give instructions to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For thy me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. If thou be wise, Thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. For she is seated at the door of her house, on a seat in the high places of the city. Call passengers who go right on their ways. Those is... Those is those is simple. Let them let let them turn in hither. And those who is wanted understanding saith to him Stolen what what has stolen is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. He knoweth, he knoweth not that are there, and that your guests are in the depths of hell. Wow, 
Wow, thank you so much, Noeline. That's amazing. I don't even know if I can do that personally. I am so surprised. Do you have anything else to tell us? Yeah. Okay, you can tell people something, then you go. Children, you have to obey your parents. Very good. Thank you, Noeline. Josiah, do you have anything to tell children? Children, you have to listen to your parents. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much, Noeline, and thank you, Josiah. Okay, you can now go. We bless the Lord. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's very good to encourage our children because uh, he needs even, go. even our children need to go to heaven. We need to train them. We need to teach them. We need to show them the right way to heaven, the right way to go. So th uh, that was just uh, for just. Yeah, let's, uh, le let's get back to our topic today. We are looking at, um, we, we are still looking at bribery and corruption. And uh, this is a silent sin that has been normalized. You know, it is a si I told you when the Lord was calling me, he told me he would give me the boldness to talk about things that very few people talk about, but uh, the devil is using it as a weapon to lead very many people to hell. Someone will tell me, let people do what they want. But let me tell you, uh, the reason God has picked uh, is, is raising an army, or I, I call it special forces, who are bold enough to talk about these things because he has his people that he's targeting to pull out of darkness. When I say God has his people, if you're not comfortable with this message, if you're not comfortable with listening to this rebuke, there are people who God has prepared this message for. There are people who are living in sin that they do not know that is sin that are ready to receive this message. There are people who will be saved through this message. So I want to encourage us to be open-minded. It is a tough message to take in. Why? Because personally, even me, the person who is talking about it, I have been there. It is not an easy message to take in. You know, so if you look at it as a judging, rebuke, condemnation, then you're going to miss out the point. But my confidence is in the fact that there are people who God has purpose to be changed by these messages. So we are talking about bribery and corruption. This is something that is being done by Christians, you know. We are not permanent in this world, I keep telling people. You're going to do everything, gain the whole world, but the, the others are, uh, eventually you're going to ask yourself, where are you going? People are dying day and night. The corrupt are dying. People are dying. You know, people are dying. The, the, there was a time when um, someone who was a, 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 a famous person in government who was known for being so much involved in two corruption and bribery passed on. And I think it was around COVID time. People were, op uh, then the, f the, the funeral service was online. But if you could see the comments that people were giving, you know, during the service, you could see that it was sad. You could really see that people were saying he deserves it. They were saying all those kind of things. If, if, if uh, he managed to repent, we thank God. But if he did not repent, do you think that if people are oppressed as a result of your actions, do you think it pleases the Lord? Do you think that if people are suffering because of you, if people are dying because we've eaten the road layers, if people are dying in hospitals because we've stolen away the drugs, you know? If people are suffering, people's property are being stolen because we've taken away the land and given to the rich, because we've been bribed. If we are lacking, if we are, the ecosystem has been disturbed, our wetlands have been, you know, destroyed because we've been bribed and given away wetlands and people are constructing wetlands. Do you think it, pr it pleases the creator? There is a reason why he created wetlands. He knew it was important. When we have floods, we know it's because we've given away our wetlands. So these are some of the small, small things that we do on the surface as Christians, but we don't know the repercussion. We don't know that at the end of the day, it is going to cost you your soul. It is going to cost people their lives. It is going to cost a lot. So today I want us to talk about what are some of the consequences what are some of those things, the effects of us being involved in bribery and corruption? I want us to talk about it. 
So many Christians have done this. We have taken God for granted. Some of you say, when you steal, you steal big, and then you say, after all, the money will go to my family. Let me tell you, we are getting into seasons or a time or it, we should have actually been thinking about these things. Of thinking beyond your family. Thinking beyond your stomach. We need to think beyond this world. There is life after this world whether you want it or not. There is life whether you choose to pretend or not. There is life after this world. So whatever you're gathering at the expense of your soul, time will come when we shall do what? We shall regret Let's not take things for granted. Let's not mock God. We do these things and take the money to church. That is mocking our creator. People are crying out there because we've deprived them of services they should get. You know, we are mocking God. We go before God and say we are safe, we are safe. The Bible says in Jeremiah 7 that we go before God and say we are safe. When we are doing what? We are pretenders. We are thieves. We are doing a lot. This weekend I was talking to an agricultural officer, a principal agriculture officer of one of the districts. And he was share, he's a Christian. He was sharing with me his experience in other uh, district when he attempted and he, has, he had always tried his best not to bribe or not to be bribed and not to be corrupt. But he has been sidelined. There was a time he missed a job with nuds. They refused to give him that job. He went for the interview and they they directly told him that we can't give you because you don't cooperate. You know? They told him we can't give you because you don't cooperate. So many of us are stuck in that. But he stood his ground and said, I don't care. I will do without that job. Are you willing to stand? People will hate you because of Christ. People will hate you because of the truth. But are you willing to stand for the truth? Jesus is looking for people who are going to side with him. He's looking for people who want to stand for the truth. Are you among them? Are you willing to give up on that job because they want you to do dirty deals? Are you willing to? Are you willing to let go? So we are, I'll get through some scriptures. Then uh, we, can, we can talk about, uh, actually I've remembered, someone was saying that uh, uh, the reason corruption is high in Uganda is because we are, we are poor and uh, sometimes you need to accept a bribe because you're going to help the person as well. So he said something like we are helping each other. There are no excuses, honestly. We don't have an excuse. Sin is sin. There is no cover up for it. It doesn't matter what situation you're in or which country you're in. Sin is sin. The Bible says in Psalms 15.5, He does not put out his money at interest, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. Exodus 23, 8 says, You shall not take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the cause of the just. You're hearing what the Bible is saying about bribery. Deuteronomy 16, 19 says, You must never twist justice or show partiality. Never accept a bribe, for, a, for bribes blind the eyes of the wise and corrupt the decisions of the godly. It corrupts the decision of the godly. Because for as long as they've given you that money, you're going to think and you're, you're going to feel sorry and give a substandard service. You know, you're going to accept to compromise in whatever way. Deuteronomy 27, 25 says, The one who accepts a bribe to kill an innocent person is cursed. And all the people will say amen. Like they are cursed. You accept a bribe to kill an innocent person. You're cursed. The Lord is so clear. He has not used any other word. He's calling it bribe. 1 Samuel 8, 3 says, But they were not like their father, for they were greedy for money. They accepted bribes and perverted justice. The Bible talks about all these things. 2 Chronicles 19, 7. Fear the Lord and judge with integrity. For the Lord our God does not tolerate per perverted justice, partiality, or taking of bribes. The Bible is saying does not tolerate, does not tolerate Christians. Christians. It is time. Let me tell you, it is time. There are people who get to me and say, Judith, you're talking about these things, but you were there. I bless the Lord for his mercy. I thank God who has pulled me out of it. Someone like me who has suffered cancer more than once. 
Imagine if cancer had taken me. I would be in hell right now and regretting all my actions. When the Lord has given you a chance to repent, forget about what you did before. Repentance means turn away from your sins. Job 15, 34 says, For the godless are barren, their homes enriched through bribery will burn. Your homes that are enriched through bribery will burn. So many of us are, are, are rich through that. But the Bible is saying you will burn. You know, there are just so many scriptures. I don't want to read all of them because I want to get into a little bit of detail. Let me end with Proverbs 15, 27. Greed brings grief to the whole family. But those who hate bribes will live. The Bible says those who hate bribes will do what? Will live. It doesn't matter the situation in your country. It will not be an excuse. Salvation is a personal journey. Choose to move the right way on your own. The Bible says the road to heaven is narrow. And the road to hell is broad. Because everyone is doing something, it doesn't mean that it is right. In fact, if very many people are comfortable in a certain sin, just understand that they are what? On a road to hell. On the broad road. Even if you are alone, even if you are alone following this path, be determined. The Lord is with you. He will give you the grace. I have seen him give me the grace. In fact, talking about bribery, I was still giving bribes. Even just, I think, a month ago, I, was, I had not yet understood. I told you God is also teaching me every month, every day, every minute. He's slowly by slowly cleaning me up. He's slowly by slowly pulling certain things out of me. So I was still doing it, giving bribes. I actually used to think giving a bribe is not wrong. It is not sin. Not until I woke up one day and he told me, you're going to stop doing these things and you trust in me. Whether they give me the service or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The most important thing in this world is if you can have clothes on your body and you can have food to eat and the oxygen that you breathe. It is not about having mansions, having apartments that you're living riches for your children. Stolen riches for your children while you go to hell. It is not about that. COVID showed us that what matters is clothing, food, and oxygen. We were stopped from working. We, hospitals were literally closed. We, education stopped for two years. Churches were closed. And everything that w the most important things were just that oxygen, your clothing, and the food. So if you're going to gain the whole world at the expense of your soul, if you're going to keep on taking this bribe because you want to put up an apartment for your children, you're going to end up in hell. So I have made up my mind personally not to give bribes. And I know the Lord will help me. I have made up my mind not to take bribes. The Lord, God sees your heart. If you're determined, he will give you the grace and make sure that you do what? You don't do it. He will give you the grace. You'll even find favor. The hearts of kings lie in his hands. There is nothing that God cannot do. If I went knowing I'm coming back to bury my dad and I came back and found him speaking, even when doctors had given up, then my God can do anything. My God can do anything. If you make up your mind not to take bribes or to pay a bribe, to give bribes, you're going to be surprised. The Lord will stand for you because he owns everything and he owns everyone. He will stand in for you. People will hate you, but it doesn't matter for as long as God loves you. For as long as they are hating you because you're speaking the truth. It is time for Christians to wake up. It is time for Christians to move out of pretense. So let's talk about some of the consequences of uh, being involved in, of bribing and, and, and bribery and taking bribes. You know, first of all, we have become poor in our country because of corruption and bribery. It has led to poverty. It has led to poverty. Someone pays for a service they don't have to pay for. They pull out the little money that should be taking care of their children. 
they pull out the little penny that should have done something else and they give it to you because you're greedy. You're gathering from all corners because you've been given authority in that office. Someone is giving it not because they want to give you, but they are doing it painfully and they are getting into poverty and you're gathering this and you're getting rich. Why do you think the Bible says it is hard for the rich to enter heaven? We have brought poverty in our country because of bribery. If we rise up as Christians and make up our minds and make a choice, make a decision to fight bribery and corruption, we can make it. There will be change. Our country will even become richer than what we see now. You know? People will move out of poverty. But we have decided to be greedy and do this. Very importantly, for as long as, whether you, li you, you want to listen to me or not, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, the Bible is so clear about bribery. God hates bribery. He does not tolerate it. So the, one of the consequence at the end of the day is you're going to end up in hell. You're going to end up in hell. For the rest, like forever and ever and ever, you'll be in hell because of greed and bribery. You know? So many professions are already lost in it. The, it has become a system. There are professions where we are simply in a chain of bribery and corruption. Look at lawyers. How many lawyers will see heaven? How many lawyers are genuine? How many lawyers are sincere? How many judges say the right thing? How many judges are just? They are hardly there. They are all into bribes. There are certain professions that if you're in, you need to be extra conscious. Otherwise, you've, you're, you've already been trapped into the way to hell. You need to be extra conscious. Surveyors like myself. I have spoken to Christians who are surveyors. I remember when I started the surveying fellowship. We used to share openly. And there was a time we shared with my colleagues and we, 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 we tried to, to, to console ourselves. And I remember we, we agreed and said that after all, God knows we don't want to give this money. We are being forced. So let's just give. Let's just give. Do you know what it means? If you know that it is illegal for the person giving the bribe and the receiver, and as a Christian you're saying, let's just give. Are we saying our God cannot defend us? Have we given up our souls just like that? Let's just give. So we go to these offices, we, we go and, and remember we are the ones who are used. They use you, you go to a client and you lie. And you tell the client that, and you can't go and tell the client that the money is for the registrar or for the senior surveyor or for the cartographer or for the physical planner. You have to tell him, you have to look for a way of covering up. And then you extort the client and you go and give this money. You know, we are extorting the public and we are Christians. We can make a difference. What happens if we all refuse? You know, it would make a difference. If it is illegal, if you're both caught and you end up in prison, do you think the Lord will say that because you are forced to give the bribe? No one forces you. We all make the decisions on our own. What am I saying? What am I saying? There will be no excuse in hell. And it will be too late. Let's purpose in these last days to live a life that is right before God. Police. You've seen police. I don't know. Last time, I, I think they told us police was the most corrupt in Uganda. You're working in, you're, you're working in security. And you're doing all these things. Traffic police has become something else. It is easy gather as much as you can. But remember, I am here to remind you that you're going to pay for whatever you gather. I am here to remind you of the consequence. And the consequence is you're going to end up in hell. It is not worth your soul. Certain professions have become a chain. 
the devil has made it a chain we are holding our hands into hell. Some people are so innocent, but because we don't know, for lack of knowledge, people are going to perish. Some people are just so ignorant. Some people just take life so easily that, ah, let us just give. Let us just, you know, someone will just go and they ask for a forest and take because of the worldly things. But you don't know that at the end of the day, it is going to cost you your soul. People are dying every day. Where are they going? Where are they ending up? Do you want to first get there and regret? At that time, there will be no grace and mercy. When you die, grace and mercy is no longer there. The Jesus we are going to meet is not a savior. We are going to meet a judge. What will the judge tell you? What will you answer the judge? Will you tell him because my country was corrupt, I had no way out? That is that at that point where there is a lot of corruption. It is at that point where God wants to see his very own. It is at that point where you are the light. It is at that point where you're going to be an example. Do you, the Bible says that how will you, how will, ev you, everyone loves their friends. You will only know that you have love if you love your enemy. You will only know that you're patient if your patience is tested. You will only know that you're not a thief if you're first in a situation where you need to act or be corrupt. You will only know. You will only know. You will only know that you can't do the right thing, that you're actually on God's side, if you're first in a scenario where you're stuck, you either have to pay a bribe or you have to be bribed and you say no. That is what Jesus was saying, that denying yourself, carry your cross and follow me. Are we carrying our cross and following Jesus? Are we denying ourselves? The Bible says that you do not belong to the world because they hated me, they will hate you as well. Are you yearning to be loved by the world? Are you yearning to be loved by the world? And you're still pretending to be a Christian, but you fail to deny yourself. You're not carrying your cross. You only love Jesus in plenty. You only love him when you have it all. But when you're faced with a scenario where you're to make a decision to defend our Lord Jesus Christ, you deny him. You deny him. Christians, we have denied Jesus. We have disappointed him. We have ashamed him and gone before him in church. We have ashamed the Lord Jesus Christ. We have misrepresented him everywhere. It is so embarrassing. It is so embarrassing. You know? You end up compromising. You end up compromising. I, 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 oh God, may God forgive us. May God forgive us. God has created the world so beautifully. You know, he put in a lot of art and design. There is a reason why he said this should be a forest. This should be a wetland. This should be a lake. There is a reason why he said that. But so many Christians in powers, in authority, you know, have done things that have taken us back, have done things that have destroyed nature, things that have destroyed nature because of compromise, because of compromise. We don't know that the Lord is watching. We think it is just about the world, you know. So many things have happened. In court, people have lost their land. People are crying. I told you people are poor because of bribery and corruption. Orphans are crying. Widows are crying. Do you think their tears are in vain? Do you think God is going to say, after all, I gave you power. And, uh, and what is important is you go to church. Do you think that's what he's going to say? God cares about our system here in the world. He hears the cry of the oppressed, the orphans, the widows. These LC ones in the villages, when you take an issue to an LC one, before you know it, a, a, a someone has been raped or defiled, the case is cancelled. 
there is a land dispute. The LC1 is bribed. And someone's land is taken. People are forging, uh, they call it what? Sales agreement. People are forging signatures, all sorts of things. For money, you know, we are doing all these things. And the question is, where are we going as Christians? Where are we going as Christians? It is going to cost you your soul. It is going, no one will tell you this, let me tell you. No one will talk about these things. People fear speaking about them. But God has given me the boldness. And he knew that I was involved. So he knows I know what I'm talking about. I have been there. And I'm so humbled. I am so humbled that he made sure I am out of it. Because who knows, I still would have been doing these things. You know? All these things are happening. God is watching. People have lost their lives in hospitals. People have lost their lives. We've given away road layers. People have failed to get drugs. A lot is going on. You know what I'm talking about. You know your departments, your sections. I'm just mentioning a few things that come up in my mind. But you know where you work. Even in banks. People are stealing money in banks. People are, you know, a lot is going on everywhere. I don't think there is any section where there is no bribery. A lot is going on everywhere. You know where you work. You know what you do. But let me tell you, the Bible says the road to heaven is narrow. These are some of the things that, are going, uh, that have made that road narrow. Because for the love of money, the Mormon spirit has blinded Christians. So the road to heaven remains what? Narrow, you know. It is a curse. It is a curse. You're t we are taking this money, but at the end of the day, this is a curse. If you're taking it and someone is crying, it is a curse. You know? A lot is going on. We know what is going on. We all know what is right and what is wrong. We know this thing is illegal. That's why when we are giving bribes and taking bribes, we normally do it in secret. You don't want someone to see you doing it. You don't want to do it under the camera. People have been caught. I know colleagues who have been caught and they've ended up in prison. Of course, they've, they've been bailed out. Still through bribery, you bribe and they bail you out. But at the end of the day, they've still ended up doing what? Being trapped, embarrassed. So you do some of these things. We even do it when we know that we can be caught. There were those days when we are discussing certain things that are illegal. I would say, let's not talk about it on phone. Why? Because it's dirty. I would say, no, no, let's not talk about it on phone. Let's meet physically. I have done it. You're doing it and you're still doing it. You know? Sooner or later, you'll be caught. But even if you're not caught in this world, you'll end up in hell. It is not worth your soul. I repeat, it is not worth your soul. You know? It is not worth your soul. And I'll continue saying that the reason this thing has increased, it's because people are willing to bribe. But if you make up your mind and you stop bribing, if these officers don't want to work, it is well. I told you let's get to a time where our mind is not focused on the world because this world is not our home. Our focus is where? It's in heaven. So what am I advising Christians? As Christians, to be sincere, let's try our best. You know? Let's try our best not to accept these bribes. If you're doing for someone work, if you do your work well, they will, uh, they will appreciate you. If you do your work well, someone will say thank you and give you something. But how do you sit in an office and say this is the fee that I want for my work and you know that it is illegal? So choose to do your work genuinely. People will appreciate you. You know, people will appreciate you, but you can't do it that way. Then as Christians, I am advising us, stop paying bribes. Stop paying bribes. It is a sin. It is not right. I know you're going to say everything that you want to say, but me, I'm telling you the truth. It is not right. You know, it is not right. Imagine if we were not doing these things. I told you, I, I, I went for an interview. I went to interview some people and uh, I was bribed. And, and the person who should have gotten the job lost it. It is painful. 
Let's stop doing these things as Christians. If we stop doing it, it starts with you. If you stop doing it, you know, it will make a difference. Our fathers enjoyed. Hmm? Our fathers. I remember. Our fathers used not to have this kind of system. There was an old man who came to our office one day. And he was so sad. He said so many words about our generation. We don't care about them. We don't care. We are so arrogant. You know. They are shocked that we, every service has to be paid for. When our fathers worked without any pay. And still as a Christian, if someone has refused to give you a service, we have a system. Every country has a system. Who said it is wrong to go and report? It is not wrong. Sorry. It is not wrong. Go and give your complaint, even if it's in police. Tell them, I have submitted my things. No one is working on me. It is a hard thing, but let me tell you, you're going to be hated for the truth. We have uh, inspectorate of government. We have anti-corruption. Go and report. You're not going to accept to lose your soul in hell because you're trying to cover up someone, because you're trying to please someone. I am not fighting for riches here. Yeah, I am fighting for people's souls. We are trying to redeem souls that are lost. We are trying to open eyes. It is not about money. It's beyond money, let me tell you. And when you're a genuine Christian, I said you will pray. You will pray to God and God will convict that person. God will change that person. He can. The hearts of kings lie in his hands. Do your part as a Christian. Play your role. It is time for you to walk in the light. It is time for you to be an example. Why should we let down the government? Government has tried. They've set up systems. They've done everything that they can. And there is also no excuse. Those people who say no corruption starts with government. So what? That it's starting from the top. So what? The Bible says in Revelation 20, 12, that we shall each be judged great and small. So it is not about anyone's status. It is an individual journey. It is not about your government. But I mean, government is trying. We are the people who are spoiling everything. So let it start with us Christians. Let's do our part. Let's do our part. Let's stand for the truth as Christians. You will be rejected. You will be segregated. But God knows what you are going through. God knows. God knows. Understand that the road to heaven is narrow. Now, if you're a Christian and you're a person in authority, God will judge you for not taking action. Take action on those officers. I'm not giving bad advice here. I know it is tough. But take action. That's the reason they put you in that position of authority. People are busy bribing. Corruption is too much. And they've given you the powers. But you're just looking on. You can't discipline an officer. Why has the Lord placed you there as a Christian? Why has the Lord placed you there? You're going to pay for all these things. If a country like Rwanda can do it, why can't Uganda do it? Why can't Kenya do it? You know, we can do it. We can do it. So as I conclude, we are doing a disservice to ourselves, but I told you my focus is we, are, we, we need to redeem souls back to Christ. Uh, let's rise up as Christians. Let's understand that there are consequences to these things. Uh, God has given us chance. COVID would have taken most of us, but you see we have remained, so God has given us chance to, chance to reform and to change and, and to redeem, you know, to get souls back. So it is time for you to change. It is time for you to make up your mind. Your pastors will may not tell you these things. You know, very many people don't talking about such things, but God has given me the boldness to do it, and I'll continue doing it without fear. Because I know God is in control. When he calls you, he equips the call and he takes charge of everything. So thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe, like, and share. Uh, send it to your circles. Don't fear, by the way. Just send it. You're saving us all. I would rather you hate me here in this world. But you change and we later celebrate together in heaven. I would rather you call me all sorts of names. People have called me everything. Call me everything. But if I can have one, two, three people accept change and their souls are ready for heaven, we shall celebrate with them in heaven. Otherwise, if I don't speak these things, many are going to regret in hell. You know? 
Hate me here, we celebrate in heaven. But I will not allow you to get to hell and then you regret that you did not hear the message. So it's very important that you share this message in your circles. This is a sin that everyone is doing. It is normal. It is now a system. It is a part of our country, for example. So because it is now a system, it's easy to be dead. And, and, and it's just easy to be a part of it. It's easy to make it your daily life. But as Christians, I don't want you to make it a part of your life. Make a difference and walk in the light. May God bless you. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory and honor. We bless your name for this day. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for reaching out to souls. I have done my part. Father, speak to them. Touch their hearts. Convict them, Holy Spirit. Guide them. This is not an easy thing, Lord. I know it. I know it. I have been there. It's not an easy decision to make you struggle here and there. The devil makes it even harder for us. But Lord, I pray that in your mercy, in your own way, enable those whose hearts have decided and made up their minds to stop being involved in these things. In your own way, touch their hearts, O oh Lord. Speak to them through dreams, through people. Give them the grace. Help us, Lord. This is a very difficult journey, but my uh, hope is in you. Help us to overcome it. Help us to overcome these things. In this wicked world where the, the Mormon spirit is everywhere and people are so lost trying to gain the world and we are losing our souls. Lord, I bless your name and I thank you that you are in charge. Touch those who are unwell and send your healing power upon them, oh God. Those who are struggling, people are looking for jobs. It is because we are lacking and we need money that we are struggling and doing all sorts of things to gain money, to get money and Lord, I pray that you help us. I pray that you provide for us. Bless our businesses that will be able to get what we need. Father, I pray for families. Help families. Re reconnect them. Reunite the ones that are breaking apart and bless their children, oh Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, we pray with in thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you so much. Continue praying for our country. Continue standing in the gap. This is a cancer that has eaten up our country. So don't sit back as Christians. Play your part. Pray for the country. Together we can bring change. May God bless you.